For the best prices and service on Pokemon TCG singles and products, check out ccgcastle.com and use promo code EVOLUTIONARIES-5 for 5% off your next order. What's up guys, N here, and for today's Deck Tech Thursday, I'm going to be profiling for you guys my Zoroark Lycanroc deck. A very, very powerful deck in the standard format right now, and Lycanroc and Zoroark are some of my favorite Pokemon just because of how awesome they are, so this is a really awesome deck for me. So, instead of me wasting 20 minutes talking about how much I love these Pokemon, I'm going to get into the deck profile and show you why it's so good. Alright, so first off here, I run four copies of Zora. It really doesn't matter what Zora you want. We have tons of standard legal ones. Literally, just pick up whatever one you think looks shiniest and best. So, no really difference there. And next up here, I have three copies of Zoark GX. And one copy of the Zoark from Breakthrough. Now, this guy right here is in almost every deck right now just because of how versatile and good it is. Especially with the ability to trade. Once in your turn, you discard a card from your hand and draw two cards. So, really, really good. If you have multiple of these guys on the bench, you could just activate multiple times throughout the turn. Which, you almost don't even need to play a supporter that turn, which, that sounds dumb. Of course, you would always want to play a supporter, but I'm just saying, if you don't have a supporter in your hand and you have a bunch of these on the bench, don't even worry about it. And right at his beating's a really good attack, too. Does 20 damage for each of your Pokemon in play. So, pretty good attack there. Uh, it does also have a GX attack, Trickster GX, but we don't really run Dark Energy in here, so we're not going to worry about that one. And the reason I run him is because I personally feel that this Zoroark is still kind of overlooked. Because Mind Jack is still an incredibly powerful attack. Combine that with Choice Band, a full bench on your opponent's side, it's doing 190 damage. And that, that knocks out so many things in the game. So, definitely powerful. One prize attacker. Not to mention Stan is still a really good ability too. Being able to put him in the active over your current active Pokemon. So, attach a Float Stone on him. And it's basically standing retreat all over the place. So, still a very versatile Zoroark. And that does it for my Zora Zoroark line. And now we're going to go into the Lycanroc lineup. Alright, we have three copies of Rockruff. Again, just like the Zoras, it doesn't really matter which one you run. Whichever one you think looks prettiest is the best one to run. And we also have three copies of Lycanroc GX, the Midnight Form. With the ability Bloodthirsty Eyes, when you play Pokemon from your hand to evolve, you switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active. So it's basically a free Pokemon catcher or free Lysander for the turn. And it's got the attacks Claw Slash, which you don't really use too much unless you're up against another Zoroark deck, then by all means attack with this guy. One shot's everywhere. And you have to attack Dangerous Ro Rogue or Rouge, however you want to pronounce it. It's not a bad attack, actually. Fighting on Colors does 50 damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So basically, it's an extremely jacked up version of Mind Jack. But it will definitely one shot whatever you're trying to knock out. So definitely the GX attack you're going to use in this deck. And the close up Pokemon here. Let's move this up a bit. I run one copy of Tapu Koko with Flying Flip, just because Flying Flip is amazing and extremely versatile. Being able to do 20 everywhere is just too good to pass up. Alright. And last up for my Pokemon lineup, I run three copies of Tapu Lele. Because Wonder Tag too good, being able to search any supporter, and you can still use Energy Drive. Which, it, even though Energy Drive doesn't apply weakness, it doesn't apply resistance either. Which actually comes in handy with how much Zoroark is out there now. So, you can actually do a decent amount of damage against Zoroark with Tapu Lele with the right setup. All right, and just like that, the Pokemon lineup is done. Now we're going to go into our supporter lineup. Going to be four copies of N. And no, once Cynthia is legal, I am not getting rid of N, for those of you guys wondering. Cynthia is a good card, but I don't feel it replaces N because N has a lot more uses than just drawing six cards early game. It also messes with your opponent's hand, too, so... For that reason alone, I feel like N's not going anywhere specific. Like, it's not going to be completely replaced by Cynthia. Like, Dex will run Cynthia, don't get me wrong, but I feel N's still going to stay for a bit. So, I run four of him, 
and three Professor Sycamore because you're already doing a lot of discarding with Zoroark's trade ability. So any more additional discard than necessary, I feel like, I feel like there's no need. Especially with, you've already got plenty of draw in the deck. So that's why, that's why this lineup. But if you still feel comfortable with four Sycamore, then by all means go for it. All right. Next up here, I have two copies of Guzma. Normally you see three to four Guzma in every deck, but since Lycanroc's ability already brings out some of your opponents active, I feel three or four would be a little too much. So I feel two just a job, does a job just fine. Not to mention we have Stan and Zoroark too for those retreat situations we need. So any more than three in this particular deck, I'd feel would clog. All right, now for our one of supporters, we actually have quite a few here. We have one copy of Malo, one copy of Bridget, one copy of your pretty boy Gladian, one copy of Skyla, and one copy of Acerola. Now the Malo just combos up with the Zorax trade. So you play Malo first, get any two cards you want from your deck, place them on top, then activate Zorax trade to draw those two cards. So it's basically like a teammate. For those of you familiar with that card, without having to meet its requirement. Bridget, just because it's Bridget. Like, every deck runs Bridget nowadays. Just being able to line up the bench with Rock Rubs and Zoras. Just too good. Too, too good. Gladian, because honestly, he's come in a lot more handy situations than most people would realize. Because in those situations to where you have that one card you need to win game prized and you haven't drawn it yet, Gladian just gets you that card immediately. So, definitely a really good card. Skyla, just because we run a lot of items and, and stuff we want to get immediately, and in case we're not able to draw to it. And Acer Roll, just to pick up one of our damaged Pokemon, specifically a damaged Lycanroc, just so we could reuse the Bloodthirsty guys again next turn. So yeah, with that, supporters are all wrapped up. And now we're going to go into our items as soon as I put this aside here. All right, for the items, for the most part, it's nothing too, too special. Just your standard item counts here. So we have four copies of Ultra Ball. Just being able to search any Pokemon, no no need for further explanation on that. Ultra Ball is Ultra Ball, and I hope they keep reprinting Ultra Ball like they have. I really don't want this card to ever go anywhere. All right, next up here, we have three copies of Choice Band. Again, another amazing card. Being able to do 30 extra damage to EXs and GXs, which is basically our entire meta. So, definitely helps with the one shots. And next up, we have two copies of Floatstone. Like I said, for those situations where you want to attach to your standard Zoarks, just be able to stand and retreat for free. And also, it's kind of nice to have this attached to a Lycan Rock, too, in case your opponent tries to Guzman it up just to buy themselves sometimes. Alright, let's put these to the side. Next up, I run two copies of Rescue Stretcher. Obvious reason, just getting a Pokemon from your discard to your hand is too, too good. Two copies of Field Blower, because we definitely do not like Garbotoxin in this deck, so we want to get rid of tools as quickly as possible. And also, just in general, we want to get rid of our opponent's choice bands, because those can be pretty annoying to deal with. Also run two copies of Eva Soda. These are definitely not for the Lycan Rocks because the ability only works if you evolve from hand. So no, these are just to get out our Zoroarks much quicker. Cause Zoroarks, we want to see a sap. And that does it for the items. And for our stadiums, I just run one copy of Brooklyn Hill and one copy of Parallel City. Brooklyn Hill is just to get more rock roughs out when we're not able to abridge it or any other situation like that. And Parallel City, just cause it's Parallel City. Numerous situations where either side can definitely come in handy. And now our energy count is going to be three copies of basic fighting, four copies of strong energy, and four copies of double colorless energy, probably the energy you're going to use the most. And with that, we are done. That has been my Zoark Lycan Rock deck profile. There's quite a number of ways you can actually build this deck too, so don't let don't let me profiling this version mean make you think that this is the only way to build it. No, there's tons, tons of ways to build Zoark Lycanroc. So, 
If you guys enjoyed this deck profile, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And come back tomorrow for Battle Frontier Friday, which hopefully I can finally get a win on. Because it's been quite a while since I got a win. So, all of you have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.